Hello, Oliver here. A while ago I announced a 10,000 subscribers Q&A. I got plenty of Qs, so today I'm here to supply the As. And yes, I could have done this a bit sooner, but I wanted to wait until after the FTL video was done so you'd actually have something substantial justifying your choice to subscribe to me. Anywho, I've picked a few of my favourite questions from the survey form, so let's get started. Rowan asks, how are you doing? Yeah, uh, I'm okay I suppose. Igor asks, what do you do for a living? I'm currently a student studying maths at university. Still have no idea what I want to do once I graduate this time next year, but we'll see. Speakers asks, what's your favourite board game? Unsurprisingly, I'm rather partial to diplomacy. I'm terrible at it as I recently proved in public, but I like it a lot. Some of my other favourites include Small World, Pandemic and Scrabble. Not that I'm very good at any of those either. Jim asks, favourite movie and pizza topping? Well, for favourite movie, I flip-flop between Up and Back to the Future. Favourite pizza topping? Olives. Unironically. Anonymous says, trans rights. So I guess I just did as well. Maledict asks whether I have any tips on how to ease friends into playing diplomacy. Firstly, I think it's sensible to start with a full 1901 test year playthrough. New people often make mistakes writing orders, or make moves that they quickly realise were poor and playing through a whole year is, in my experience, enough to iron out most of these issues. Secondly, you'll want to be careful when approaching the endgame, because for all its good design, diplomacy definitely suffers from lacklustre endings. People may get bored and fed up, so either set a sensible ending date like 1908 for the first game, or be ready to stop when you notice people aren't feeling it anymore. Salam40 asks, How much time do my big videos take to make, and what's the process like? Well, I think I have a pretty well-defined process now. When I decide I want to make a video about something, which could happen quickly like 5D chess or take literal years like Mortal Engines, I start by doing research, the amount of which varies depending on how well I know the topic already. I then write and edit a script with full detail on the spoken word side, but really just an outline for the visuals. This can also take a very long time because it's the part I get most self-critical and demotivated about. If I get through it though, I then record the script in Cubase. This part is also very frustrating because I am abysmal at speaking, or at least speaking well enough for me to deem it an okay recording. Then I edit the audio and load it into DaVinci Resolve, where I edit the timings and make all the visuals. Here, finally, I start to like what I make. Especially with my FTL video, I hated the script, I hated my narration, and yet once I got the timings right and added visuals and music, it all clicked and I realised I was actually quite proud of it. Even for longer videos, this process is quite fun and takes at most maybe two weeks because of that. The duration of the whole process though is highly variable and subject to how much free time I have. I'd say it equates to a few months on average. Floorbeard asks, what pushed you to make content unrelated to music? I've been making non-music stuff online probably since before I was making music. Partly stuff for Thrive and partly stuff I've written. Oh yeah, did I mention I write books? Well. Did write books. I haven't worked on any for maybe a year or two. Maybe I'll change that soon. So I had lots of experience writing online and I wanted to use that writing skill to make videos because I went through a phase of watching more video essays than any mortal man should and thought I could join in. I just couldn't edit videos yet. Happily, making a few music videos helped teach me that skill and somewhere along the line I worked out how to record my narration properly too. I put this all to test with my Paraworld video which looking back on definitely has major flaws, and really I knew that at the time, but for a first effort, I'll take it. Then I made a music album, before coming back to the idea a year later with my diplomacy video, and the rest is history. Anonymous asks, what is Thrive? Thrive is a game about evolution, loosely based on Spore but with more scientific ideals. The team is open source so anyone can join and contribute. I'll definitely be making a video essay about Thrive at some point where I go into more detail, and by more detail, I mean way too much detail. Anonymous asks, are there other types of videos I'd consider dabbling in besides music, video essays and educational videos? Potentially. I mean, I have wild ideas all the time for random things to make, which is kind of why I don't want to pigeonhole my channel into a single genre. It all depends on whether I have the capability to match my imagination. For instance, one day I'd like to animate a short story or two. That would require being much better at digital art than I am though. That or collaborating with someone. Hint hint. Aaron Kirsch asks, Why are you British? Imperialism. 
Isno asks, can you speak German or any other foreign languages? Clearly you haven't watched the videos where I try to pronounce Spielen Kreifuklukonk or Traction Schilapitumplimp. No, I'm a monolingual failure. Anonymous asks, what exactly is your profile picture? Ooh, I was hoping someone would ask this. It's actually a photo of a tree outside my window that I ran through a crazy filter and thought looked cool. So I used it as the art for a music track that I made and also my profile picture at the time. Then I never bothered to change it. Love your content, thank you, asks, how much do I enjoy making stuff, would I consider full-time YouTube, and will I ever start a Patreon or similar? I do enjoy making content, but as I've said I get pretty perfectionist about it, so I often enter into frustrating cycles where I'm too scared to make stuff, then get annoyed at myself for being too lazy to make stuff. The end results are usually worth it of course, and it's nice to see people appreciating them. Would I consider YouTube full-time? Uh, I, I don't know, I think I'd rather keep it as a hobby. Trusting my employment to the fickle YouTube god sounds… problematic. And since I'd rather work on what I want when I want, I can't see myself making a Patreon, at least for now. Donations get bundled up in commitments and expectations. I won't rule it out for the future, but yeah, not right now. If you have money to give to a Patreon for something I'm tangentially involved with, might I suggest Thrive? Solid asks, do I know the YouTuber Exerbia? Because you have a lot of similarities. I do know of Exerbia, and you're not the first one to make that comment. It's not conscious on my part. Maybe all British people just sound the same. Rasmus asks, what is your favourite maths equation? Okay, so this question gave me a slight existential crisis because I suddenly realised… I don't know. There are definitely some I remember being in awe of when I learnt about them, but I can't remember which. Obviously there are the classics like Euler's Identity, but I want something a million other people haven't already said. Maybe it's the fact I haven't done maths in two months since it's the summer holidays, but I'm afraid I genuinely can't decide right now. Sorry. Anthony asks, what has been the most fun video of yours to make? Honestly? Uh, probably I made a video. I made it in like two days and every stage was fun because I didn't take it seriously at all. Maybe I should do more stuff like that. Sarp asks, how are you able to find so many random things to link to in your videos? Well, I suppose a combination of my random interests and picking up random connections over years of thinking about things. Like, I'm fairly sure I'm the only person on Earth who would consider putting a TV burp reference in a video about FTL, but that's because I really like both and I had the TV burp philosophy fight idea lying around for a long time waiting for the right video. If you mean more on the academic side, like framing diplomacy in terms of math, psychology and history in one video, I like to learn about lots of different things and I believe the best insights usually come from combining different disciplines in unexpected ways. Oliver, nice name, asks, what program do you use to make music? Cubase is my audio workstation of choice. Well, it wasn't really a choice. A trial version came free with a guitar amp my dad bought, and I've been steadily upgrading from it ever since. A humble civilian who loves tomfoolery asks, do you believe in quality over quantity in videos? Uh, have you seen my upload schedule lately? Now, I got a load of questions asking me to make videos on specific topics or pieces of media. I'm afraid I'm unlikely to take requests like this because I need both a personal connection to the topic and something unique to say about it to want to make a video in the first place. Although I will say, one of the questions on screen right now correctly guessed one thing I am planning to make a video on. Which one? You'll find out. Eventually. A Cyrillic name I have no hope of pronouncing asks, what's your favourite breed of dog? Samoyed, because I have one. And finally, not my name backwards asks, pronounce if. So there we go, a few of my favourite questions answered. Apologies if yours wasn't included, some were too similar to these, some were too personal, and some were questions I didn't really have interesting answers for. Thank you again for 10,000 subscribers everyone, here's to the next 10,000. Well, next 8,000 because in the time it took me to make this video, 2,000 more people decided to subscribe. I still can't work out why.